Did you ever think which is the most important dasha of your life? Mahadasha, Antardasha, especially, or let's say Mahadasha. You could also take Antardasha. Did you ever think? Now, when I say important, what do I mean? Does do I mean that you know it it is something very good? Or is it something very bad? Or is it full of lessons? Well, you could say all of these, but specifically when I say important, what I mean is a dasha which actually reveals what you want in life. <laughs> which is that dasha? Yes, 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 you are right. You saw it correctly in the thumbnails. We are talking of the dasha of the Lagna Lord. Who is your Lagna Lord? Who is your Lagnesh? The ruler of the first house. That is the planet that we are going to discuss today. It is the Lord of the Ascendant. And I have made a lot of videos on Ascendant. Remedies uh, ascend for Ascendance. Uh, I will also complete the series on uh, videos for Ascendance. Planets for Ascendance. But if you are not well aware of Ascendance. Then please watch my other videos on Ascendance. They will really help you to understand what the Ascendant is, okay? And as usual, if you are new, then please subscribe and like this video and comment your uh, thoughts below. I would love to see them uh, and also learn from you what is your experience of your Ascendant Lord's Dasha. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will surely find him even if you do not get your Ascendant Lord's Mahadasha. <laughs> it happens sometimes, right? All right, and if you want a consultation from me, my website is down in the description section. So, what is the Lagna Lord? We have three very important planets, actually four, three. Or who is the number one planet? Number one is Lagna Lord. Then we have the Sun. Then we have the Moon. Then we have the Atma Karaka. So these four planets are very important. And if you have Sun, Moon as Atma Karaka, then it becomes three and if you are cancer or leo lagna then also it is three now what is the difference between these four plants it's very important to understand because if you see they say that uh, your personality is a mixture of the nine planets but primarily these four planets first is your lagna lord then sun moon and your atmakarg but does it mean that you just mix these four planets and you turn out to be some cyclone or some mess and then that's who what you are. That's what, who you are and that is what you represent. Well, not necessarily. It is not just homogeneous mixing. Okay, It is not just like um, sugar and salt. It's not like that. But then what is it? You have to understand. Otherwise, you cannot differentiate because... Uh, people always think, oh, my sun sign is this, my ascendant sign is this, and my moon sign is this. So maybe I'm like a triangle, you know. The people don't know much about the Atmakara, but they very, very well know about these three. So, so does it mean you are like a triangle? Well, not necessarily, because these energies are very harmonious, and they can act in different ways when one of them is a bit different. So, for example... Uh, the sun is the primary Atmakarak. He is the Nasargik Atmakarak. So the, the sun shows what you identify yourself with in this world. Okay. So the sun is very important because sun represents your kingdom. Like, you know, I have this mobile. I have this mouse. This is like my kingdom, my tiny kingdom. You know, I have this printer in the back, you know, some plants. <laughs> so I own something, right? But somebody may own something much bigger you know somebody may be billionaire trillionaire have a lot of estates right so then that person is also a king but uh, the person is a bigger king than me okay <laughs> so sun represents what you own in this world what is your identity why you will be known for your name and fame then moon represents how do you feel about the kingdom that you have because the moon reflects the light which it receives from the sun. It does not have its own light. So, whenever you see something, you know, you have a car. What happens when you see it? Do you feel good? Do you feel, or do you feel average or you're very delighted? What happens, right? So, that is what is the moon basically. Your 
feel the feel good factor okay or the feel bad factor also about your resources and your assets and then comes the lagna lord the lagna lord shows your focus where are you focusing in life now the sun and moon also shows focus undoubtedly they show focus but they primarily show who you are and how do you feel about this world that is what is the basic meaning of a sun sign moon sign and if you combine both okay but then the lagnesh shows what you will be inevitably doing in this world what will you do either by choice or by force this is very important so you will either do it out of happiness or misery yes not just focus by free will okay i choose to focus in this area no you may also be forced to focus okay especially if the lagnesh is connected to dusthana houses then you may be forced to do things uh, in certain areas of your life which you may not like which you may absolutely hate but because the dusthana houses show pending karma so you will have to end up uh, seeing that doing that inevitably so this is very important to understand the difference between these three and of course then we have the atma karaka atma karaka shows your desires at a soul level okay but among these four the lagnesh dasha is very important i won't say it is just you know the most important you cannot grade you know which is more important sun dasha moon dasha atma karaka dasha or lagnesh dasha you cannot grade but why i why i am still saying that lagnesh dasha is probably the most important is because the lagnesh the lagna also shows external things in life what are you doing externally and sun and moon also represent external things but they are more like you know who you are who you are now you may say no but then that is more important but here's the catch here's the unfortunate situation in kaliyuga as kaliyuga is getting more and more gross as time is passing by as things are progressing or degrading in the name of progress what is happening is people are valuing externals more and more they feel that okay um, unless i have this thing or that thing i am not successful i cannot be happy unless i have that so it's like saying you have the sun the sun is like your identity who you believe yourself and then you have the moon how you feel about who uh, the things that you own but you keep it aside and then you will go and do something in your profession or in general in your life even if you hate it even if you don't like it so uh, people have become more conscious of their external reality and they have they are not in sync with uh, their own reality internally which they actually are but people are still fine with it this is very unfortunate but this is this is true and that's that is a hard fact of life that people are people are happily pretending to be somebody else or pretending to do something which they don't like because they will become famous okay so therefore the dasha of the lagnesh is very important because it will show you so in the dasha of the lagnesh you will get to know what which areas are you focusing are you going to focus in your life naturally so for example if your lagnesh mahadasha comes so whatever you do in that mahadasha try to think what happened in your lagnesh mahadasha or let's assume the mahadasha is very long you know some people might get it in their uh, 40s late 50s 60s 70s some people may not get it in their life but let's assume you have got antar dashas okay so if you are like 30 35 you are between 20 to 40 then you have experienced like two or three mahadashas maybe or at least one and in that you got the antar dasha of your lagna lord so go and see make notes try and see what happened in that in that year in that month 
no, or when the Lagnish Antar Dasha started, happened in your life? What, what are the things that you were involved with? Was there something that you automatically started doing, even though uh, that was not something you thought you would have done before? Because the the you have to understand what is Lagnesh. Lagnesh is like a desire. Okay, it is like your focus. Now this is very important. Why I am saying because in your last life, as Lord Krishna says in the Gita, that whatever state of being you are at which you have at the end of your life, that state you shall attain without fail. So this means if you have your Lagnesh in a particular place in this uh, life, then it means you, you had a strong desire to fulfill that area of your life at the end of your uh, previous life or not just the recent previous life, many, many, many previous lifetimes. Otherwise, you would have not been born with that placement of Lagna Lord. So, for example, your sun and moon may be somewhere else. So, inherently, you are somebody which is the sun and moon. But you want to do something else. So, therefore, whenever people, they ask questions like, you know, what is my life purpose? You know, what should I do in life? You know, what will I be known for? Well, you must check the Lagna Lord because the Lagna Lord will tell you, as I said, I'm repeating once again, it's very important, things which the person will focus. Now, when the person focuses, the person will grow in that area. The person may become famous because of that also. Okay, And of course, now here is the catch. If you have seen the Lagna Lord, but you have not seen the sun and moon, then you will run into problems because it's, it's very interesting because the sun and moon, the placement of sun and moon, compared to the Lagnesh, if you if they are not in harmony, if these three are not in harmony, then what happens is the person during the dasha of the Lagnesh is very much wanting to do something, but that is completely opposite of his nature. <clears throat> and then the person gets frustrated and he gets into wrong habits, you know, addictions and the person procrastinates and all this. So, a very strong Lagna Lord, very strongly placed somewhere, but without harmony with sun and moon, can give you depression in life. Now you think, oh, my Lagnesh is very strong. It is in Kendra. It is in exaltation, Mool Trikon, right? So, my Lagnesh would be excellent. My Lagnesh Dasha, Dasha would be fantastic, right? Well, what if you end up in depression? <laughs> because you are doing something which you inherently don't believe. But somehow, because of the conditionings, which means, you know, your uh, surroundings, they have somehow influenced you to believe that something is very important. And because of that, you have got into some bad association or wrong association and you have started to believe something which you... Don't believe yourself deep down inside. But you are trying to convince yourself. It's like uh, trying hard to make yourself believe in something which you inherently don't believe. So when you do this, then what happens is you start losing focus in life. After a certain point. Initially, you know, one year, two year, three year, four year, five year, six years. For maybe you do it for 10 years. But one point comes in your life where you are like... I am so frustrated. I am done with all this. You know, I, I do not want to do this anymore. So, all right, bye. I am done with all this. So, then you tend to do the things opposite to your Lagna. And where, what does it mean? Opposite, opposite means the seventh house from your Lagna Lord. So, therefore, if you feel you are very much obsessed about something, which means, you know, your Lagnesh is in, suppose, um, sixth house. You know, you are very much obsessed with job and money and profession and all this. Then at times, you should also focus on the seventh house from Lagnesh, which is, in this case, the twelfth house, which is, you know, detachment, relaxation and all this. You know, some give some donations to somebody. Try to help somebody uh, for even if that person cannot benefit you in any way. 
Why? Because that will protect you from getting into extremes. And surprisingly, you should do this more if you have a good lagnesh. How bizarre it is. It's like saying your lagnesh is exalted. Suppose, no, and then what happens is, now I'm telling you, oh, don't be in exaltation, be in debilitation. How bizarre this is. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, if your lagnesh is very strong and if you feel you have given 100%, still you feel there's something wrong, then maybe you should look to the seventh house from your lagna lord. <clears throat> and even before you do that, you need to understand that lagnesh will only give you good results. Now, lagnesh does not magically give you good results. You know, this is like a fallacy, you know. But Ashlo just say it like this. Lagnesh will give you good results, you know. <laughs> now, when I say good results, I mean that you will be able to do something prominent, okay. You yourself, not that something magically uh, you will be awarded. You will be able to do something important only if your sun and moon are in harmony. So, now here's the problem. If your sun and moon are not in harmony, then you will only be able to do it for a short period of time. And then you may go to the seventh house from Lagnesh. So what should you do in such a situation? Well, you have to uh, you you have to see you know what is going on uh, overall in the horoscope. So if Lagnesh, Sun and Moon, they are not giving you clear answers, which means you are not able to understand what's going on just with these three. Well, then welcome to astrology. You have six other planets. They will tell you. So the best thing to do with the Lagna Lord is to try to channelize the energies of the Lagnesh towards where the majority of the planets are going. That is the best thing you can do because then you are not only doing something which is true to your nature, you are also doing something which you will inevitably do because uh, if four or five planets are indicating something in their Mahadasha, Antardasha, you are going to do it anyways. And if the Lagnesh is also added to that, well, it is like gold. Okay. So therefore, the conclusion is don't just see the Lagnesh, don't just see the sun, don't just see the moon, do a comprehensive analysis and try to figure out what are all the nine planets saying and try to see how you can uh, balance the Lagna Lord. So if the Lagna Lord is saying something completely opposite, then try to see how you can uh, make the person focus in certain things, uh, even if the Lagnesh is not indicating. You know, maybe in some Dashas, you can do that. Okay. Maybe in certain dashas that gets more aggravated. You know, you are like pretending very hard to be somebody else. Okay. But you have to find some cure from the horoscope. Cure in the sense, you have to see, okay, maybe the person will always inherently focus on something which the nine planets are saying opposite. But still, there are like three, four planets. In uh, those planets, dashas, the person will focus on something which he actually believes in. So once you see that, once you know the direction of the chart, then you can maybe suggest some remedies to exemplify those traits, you know. And in these cases, the gemstones actually help because gemstones exemplify your energy, energy of a planet. So if you see that your Lagna Lord is somewhere and sun and moon and other planets are opposing it, then maybe you can wear some gemstone. Uh, but again, that, that uh, very strong disclaimer... Uh, just don't blindly wear gemstones of some planet, okay? And now you might have not seen the previous part of this video and now you directly jump to this and you will think I am telling you to wear gemstone of your ascendant. No, that's criminal. Don't do it. Unless you see the chart, do not wear gemstones, okay? So just see what is going on in the chart and once you find the vector, you know, it's like everything is aligning towards one direction, then you check the Lagnesh. Then you check the Lagnesh again because when you do the comprehensive analysis, you anyways have to check the Lagnesh. So once you see the Lagnesh and other planets, then you come back to the Lagnesh again. Oh, the chart is telling this. The Lagna, Lagnesh is saying this. How should we navigate through this? Okay. At a practical level, let me give you an example. 
So if the nine, if eight planets, let's assume some, uh, you know, fancy scenarios. Imagine eight planets, all other planets other than the Lagnesh is saying, this person has to go and work in corporate. But the Lagnesh is maybe in fifth house. Okay, for example, and the person wants to do creativity, but uh, because of some other reason, you know, this person is forced to work in a job which he doesn't like. There are some circumstances because of which he cannot leave also. So then you have to tell the person that maybe one weekend in a week you can focus on that. Okay. Maybe something works out later. Who knows? Right. So therefore, you have to find space for the Lagnesh and also for all the nine planets. If you just keep doing what the Lagnesh is doing and you ignore all the other eight planets, it will be a disaster. And if you do the other, other way around, opposite, you don't pay attention to the Lagnesh and you do only what the eight, other eight planets are doing, that will also uh, be very bad. Okay, so therefore, please understand that Lagnesh, Sun, Moon, Atmakarg, these are very important planets and please use them when you do a comprehensive analysis and then again come back and try to see how you can fit in the energies okay that is the most important task of an astrologer during a consultation is to see how the energies are culminating together and how you can make the person happier okay happier not just you know by telling sweet things nice things you know but but by giving practical lifestyle changes and remedies okay all right ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your patience if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and uh, if you want a consultation my website will be down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him thank you